Hello, my name is Mike Slynn. I'm a software contractor specializing in enterprise application development using Adobe Flex and Java. Today I'd like to show you an enterprise Flex project that I've been working on these past few months for a client. The project requirements were to develop an advanced web service framework for Adobe Flex and Air clients and to develop associated support tools. This video describes the major features of one of the support tools which aggregates schemas from multiple web services and generates flex value objects, reference classes, and service delegates. The framework, which is not described in this video, serializes the web service request data and deserializes the web service response. It includes a custom flex decoder and encoder that can handle a wider range of WSDL than the standard flex SDK can. By the way, if you would like more background on Flex Web Services, please view my SlideShare presentation entitled Using Flex with Enterprise Web Services. A link is shown in the notes below this video, and this video is entitled, embedded in the slideshow after slide 27. So if you have not seen the slideshow yet, go view it now, and at the appropriate time, this video will automatically play. This diagram shows the general relationship between schemas and web services. The generic diagram shows three web services that contain a total of five schema definitions. The schemas that are not shared and that are specific to the various web services are called Unique Schema 1, Unique Schema 2, and Unique Schema 3. The schema called Shared Schema 1 is shared by Web Service 1 and Web Service 2. Web Service 2 also contains a definition of Shared Schema 2, which itself is shared with Web Service 3. You might wonder what happens if a schema definition is defined differently in various web services and if that is normal to share. Yes, this is normal. Each schema normally only contains definitions for the SOAP types that are required to describe the web service operations in that web services WSDL. That means one must assume that each web service only defines a subset of the schemas that it requires. Only by aggregating the schemas from each web service can the full schema definitions be discovered. The schemas are always in sync because they're all regenerated on the server simultaneously any time that a change to the underlying database is made. My client used TIBCO AMX as the server for this purpose. WSDL for all web services must have at least one schema definition. The venerable access generator is widely used. In fact, it is by far the most popular code generator. Access was developed without regard for use cases for clients that need to develop models derived from an aggregation of schemas expressed in multiple web services. Flex Builder 3 and Flash Builder 4 use a variant of the Axis version 1.3 generator. If you use an axis-based value object generator, you will get value object classes defined for each schema in each web service. The duplicate ca classes will cause havoc with your model if you generate value objects into distinct directories according to the web services. The software tool described in this video is called VO Massager. It stands for Value Object Massager. VO Massager imports WSDL from several web services aggregates the schemas, and generates client-side value objects, much as Flex Builder 3 and Flash Builder 4 do. The major difference between VO Massager and the Flex IDEs is that VO Massager is schema-oriented, not service-oriented. VO Massager is an Adobe Air application. It runs from a configuration file, which I have previously prepared. Once the configuration file is loaded, we see there are nine web services defined. Here they are. And uh, I've disguised their names and hidden the URIs to protect client confidentiality. Each web service defines more than one schema. The top schema, shown under the pseudonym BAMBAM Bam here, is defined by all of the nine web services. The schema uh, below it called Pebbles is shared between three web services. This means that three web services contain definitions for three schemas. 
Let's take a look at a web service. It has a name that I assigned, a URI, and two schemas that define SOAP types. Here's schema BAM BAM, here's schema Barney. Here's all the SOAP types in BAM BAM. We could click on one and see how they're made up. Over here, we have, for each complex type, we have the properties of that type. And we can just walk through them all. Similarly, for the other schema, we can just walk through all of these and see what they are. And if we double click on a type, it takes us to the definition. So we can walk through things very nicely. We can also test a connection to a web service. So to do that, I'll double click on this and I'll test it. And we get a, a negative response. In other words, we're not connected to this web service. That's because the VPN is, is uh, not enabled. Uh, when I enable a VPN, we will see that this actually works. All of the web services can be tested together. And this is done so a consolidated set of schemas will be constructed using the current schema definitions. As developers know only too well, schemas are often in constant flux right up to the point where the web services are frozen which can be rather late in the development cycle. In the project I was recently working on, VO Massager was run several times a day as web services were tweaked. Okay, so let's go and test that. We'll test these web services. Two are not online, and the rest are online. And we can see, again, how they were created. In other words, what schemas are present in each of the web services. Now let's look at some of the classes that VO Massager can generate. VO Massager can generate the value objects for all of the schemas, or we can select specific schemas and generate value objects just for them. The generation process is very quick. This generation wrote about a thousand classes to the value object directory. By the way, the value object directory contains subdirectories, one for each schema. Here's a simple value object. It looks very much like that generated by Axis. However, only the necessary imports were uh, presented, and types are only fully qualified when required. Here's a collection type, subclass from array collection, that was generated for a bindable collection. The Flex SDK uses arrays for collections that do not need to be bindable. Again, this class looks just like a class that might have been generated by Axis, except that only the necessary imports are present. VO Massager can also generate reference classes. Reference classes guarantee that every value object is included in an application. As you may know, the Flex compiler only includes classes that have explicit references to them. Because value objects may be implicitly invoked, they may not be included, and a runtime error would result. Reference classes simply define a private property for each of the value objects, thereby forcing them to be included in the application. Thank you very much. Hope you found this informative. You can learn more at my website, mslin.com. Please also visit Slinbooks to get your copy of Flex Data Services, Hibernate, and Eclipse.